with his bastard half-brother, Damon Dead, and the Blackfire Rebellion firmly dealt with, at least for now. King Daron II Targaryen resumed his reign and his work of uniting Westeros as one kingdom by integrating the Dornish into the realm. For some, the assistance of the Dornish in putting down the rebellion helped win them favour within the Lords of Westeros, but for those who marched with Daemon Blackfire, that resentment would linger for generations. While House Targaryen had won the war firmly and the supporters of Daemon had been punished, the divide the rebellion caused among the Lords of Westeros would leave scars that would never fade even to the end of the Targaryen ruler Westeros and the rise of House Baratheon. But in the short term, King Daron II would begin to repair Westeros with his sons and heirs supporting him. In fact, many thought that King Daron had now ensured that the realm would be under Targaryen rule for centuries to come, as the line of succession was clear, with his sons mostly proving to be the kind of princes any king would want to follow them. Not since the time of Aegon III had the succession seemed so secure. Baelor Breakspear was a strong heir, and he himself had two sons of his own, in Valar and Materis Targaryen. But as followers of history rightly know, even the most secure situations can have a sting in the tail. But few could have doubted that Baelor Breakspear would be a great knight, for he was the heart of chivalry and the soul of wisdom and came to serve his father most ably as Hand of the King. In a lot of ways, his non-traditional Targaryen look would do much to bring Dawn and House Martell closer with the wider realm of Westeros, but no man could know the will of the gods. Sadly for King Daron and the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros, the promising future rule of Baelor was never to be, as Baelor Breakspear, the eldest son of the King, the Prince of Dragonstone and Hand of the King, was cut down in his prime. The death of the prince was a shock for House Targaryen for sure, but what made the situation worse is the cause of Baelor's death was in fact his own brother, Prince Makar. While Baelor's death was indeed accidental, the events that caused it would become a tale of legend and song and mean that Ashford would forever be remembered as a place that the fate of Westeros and House Targaryen would change forever and travel down a very different path than any could have predicted. If one word could sum up the events, it would have been unlikely. Baelor Breakspear died in the tourney at Ashford Meadow in the year 209 AC. It was not the tilt or the melee as you'd expect an accidental death to occur, but in a trial of seven, the first in a century in which Baelor fought on behalf of a lowly hedge knight of no parentage of note, a complete unknown, who was attending his first tourney as a knight in his own right. Baelor's death was a mishap, almost certainly, as it was written that Prince Makar always bitterly regretted Baelor's passing and marked his anniversary every year. Yet Baelor died, and doubtless Makar and the realm wondered if one hedge knight was worth the loss of the Prince of Dragonstone and the Hand of the King. But then, they did not know how high that very hedge knight would rise, and the role that Sir Duncan the Tall would play in the future of House Targaryen and Westeros. In fact, without that lowly hedge knight, and his valour in the years to come, the current state of Westeros would not be possible. As we have discussed, Baelor Breakspear had two sons, the young prince Valar and Materis, and so too did Makar, and the king had two other sons beside, though the realm was less certain about Eris, a bookish man obsessed with arcane matters, and Rhaegel, a sweet boy supposedly touched by madness. As things stood, Valar was next in line for the throne followed by his younger brother. Should anything happen to the princes, the childless Prince Aerys would inherit the throne instead. Failing that, the questionable Prince Rhaegal and his young twin sons. Lastly, we would have Prince Makar, whom too had many sons of his own. However, for the crown to fall that far would need an extremely unlikely series of events, given how far down the line of succession Makar and his sons were. But sometimes the most unlikely events are the ones that pass, as in 209 AC, the Great Spring Sickness swept the Seven Kingdoms, affecting all save the Vale and Dawn, where they closed the ports and mountain passes. Worst hit of all was King's Landing. The High Septon, the Seven's voice on Earth, died as did a third of the most devout, and nearly all of the Silent Sisters residing in the city. Corpses were piled up in the ruins of the Dragon Pit, till they stood ten feet high, and in the end, Brendan Rivers, Blood Raven, who by the year 209 was acting as Hand of the King, had the pyromancers burn the corpses where they lay, as there were too many to bury. A quarter of the city went up in flames along with them, but there was nothing else to be done. 
Worse still, the sons of Balor Breakspear were amongst those carried away, as was King Daron II himself. He had reigned for 25 years, and most of those years saw peace and plenty for the realm. He had brought Dawn into the Seven Kingdoms, put down the Blackfire Rebellion, and repaired much of the damage caused by the misrule of his father, King Aegon IV. With Balor Breakspear and his sons dead, the throne would pass to his next eldest son, the childless Prince Eris, now King Eris I Targaryen. And so came to pass the first in a series of unlikely events that would change Westeros and House Targaryen forever. Mm -hmm.